tonight on Animal House. A dog is abandoned and left for dead. Unfortunately, even if we get him back into shape, he's unlikely ever to be able to be rehomed. The SPCA investigates poisoning on Kawa Island. It's not too pleasant, is it? We have to find that poison. And the rescue of a husky proves challenging for inspectors. It's not going to be an easy retrieval, but we'll get there. An inspector is arriving at base with a dog on the brink of death. We had a call from Housing New Zealand. They told us there was a dog abandoned in the property. So I went to the property and this little guy was um, locked in a storage room. Vicky suspects the crossbreed dog has been locked up without food or water for about a week. To be honest, I cried when I saw this guy when I opened the door. And um, he was pretty lifeless. And. Uh, but very trusting, just trying to come towards me with his tail wagging. It's the worst case I've ever seen. Um, he's just so infected and he's emaciated. He's weak with hunger and appears to be suffering from a severe and painful skin disease. Hey, Betty. Hi. Where have you found this one? Uh, in an abandoned on a property in Mangaree. So is it a stray or do you think you have an owner? No, I'm going to search for the owner. Okay. It's almost certainly Demodex, but I'll scrape him just to be sure. Demodex mange can be deadly without treatment as it damages the immune system. The dog must have been suffering for many weeks and the SBCA suspects he's been left to die alone in the storage room. I mean, I just don't know why they didn't call us for help. You know, instead of just lock it in a room with no food or water. I mean, it's criminal, man. It's just... There's no excuse for that, none at all. Hey, baby. So what's the verdict, boss? Yeah, it's definitely Demodex. There's plenty of them there. With the mange, especially with Demodex, they get secondary bacterial infections, which is what causes all the scabbing. And this is what makes them really sick. The skin just thickens up in flames. It rolls in on the eyes. So the eyelashes actually start rubbing on the eyeballs, and that's why they go mucky. So we'll have to medicate those as well. These holes in him, obviously the infection's got that deep that he's developed small abscesses under the skin and they've just burst through. He's got little holes everywhere. With this level of infection, he'll be losing proteins. He'll probably be anemic. Complete cures are not, are not easy at all. Unfortunately, even if we get him back into shape, he's unlikely ever to be able to be rehomed. But we're so, gonna give it our best shot, aren't we? We're gonna see what happens. <laughs> he's almost beyond straight. hope, but Vicky is determined to save him. I don't want to have to put him to sleep right now. I mean, if he was in a lot of distress, of course I would. Um, but if we can manage it and try and, and just give him a little bit of life back, yeah. He deserves a go, you know. It's going to take a miracle to save this dog. Staff are naming him Job after the biblical character, who, against all odds, never lost faith. Suspicions of animal cruelty are taking the SPCA to Kawo Island. We're investigating um, some allegations that um, person or persons are using racumen, which is rat bait poison, um, to eradicate the wallaby population. Wallabies are classified as pests, but this poisoning may be inhumane and illegal. A little bit blood. Sue heads into the island in search of poison and a victim. There is one there. This wallaby looks healthy, but it's one of the lucky ones. They say they're trying to um, maintain the flora and fauna of the island and the wallabies are destroying it, which is completely untrue. They're, they've been here for longer than anybody else has. They've been here for 138 years. They're thriving with the island. Rachel believes many wallabies are suffering slow and painful deaths due to an island poisoning blitz. If yeah. they need to get rid of them, yeah. if that's what ARC and DOC's decisions are, which, again, I don't yeah. agree with, but kill them with kill the DOC them. as they've been yeah. doing. You don't poison them, Shoot it's just them. too cruel. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Sue has been invited to a local's house to see these shy animals up close. Come on, dinner time. 
I've never seen a wallaby before, and it's, it's pretty special to see them. Adrian Smith has made these wild animals her pets, but many of her neighbours want to see them dead. It's horrible to think that there's people on the island that are deliberately using poison that isn't supposed to be used on something as big as a wallaby, um, so therefore more than likely would take a lot longer for it to die. We just need to get to the bottom of what's going on here, and we will. On the North Shore, there's been a complaint about a dog left alone on a deck for several days. Hello. Hey, little puppy. I know, girl. Neil will come and rescue you. The SPCA fears the dog has been abandoned. It's the dog who's been up on the deck for somewhere between sort of three and five days, um, according to the informant. Nobody's been seen at the house. Um, We've left a notice yesterday to see if anybody was coming in and feeding it, but we've had no contact from that and the notice is still on the door. So we'll, um, we'll have to get some ladders out and see if we can get it down. Herb wants to assess the condition of the dog. Hello, Gil. Huskies are high maintenance dogs. They need plenty of exercise, but it looks like this one really leaves the deck. There's loads and loads of feces up here. She's in pretty good body condition. She's got plenty of water, which is a good sign. Um, but the indication of the feces on the deck would lead me to believe that she's been up here for a long time. Um, and it's just not acceptable to leave a dog 24 hours without tending to it. Oh, here they are you. Yeah? Hmm? Good deal. You don't want to be carrying her. Carrying the husky doesn't look like an option, so the inspectors are trying to figure out how to get her down safely. It soon becomes clear plan A isn't going to work. Yeah, okay. no, this is going to slip out the, the back. The inspectors will need to come up with a better strategy. Um, it's not going to be an easy retrieval, but we'll get there. The sad plight of Job, the dog left for dead, has touched the hearts of animal lovers. But after a month at the SBCA, there has been a miracle. Against all odds, Job is making an incredible recovery. Every week he's getting at least one bath. It depends a lot on how itchy he is. It's a very itchy um, problem, the mite, because it bows in under the skin. So it's like it's if you had hives or um, really bad dermatitis or something like that. He's also getting weekly injections of an antiparasitic drug just to try and kill the mites that are under the buried and under the skin and every day he is receiving antibiotics as well as eye medication. Good boy, come on, jump hill. Good boy, jump hill. After four weeks of treatment for malnutrition and mange, his visible wounds are slowly healing. Good boy, you're not used to being outside, are you? Because of the condition of his skin, his immunity's been lower than if, it, if he'd had no skin problems, so we haven't wanted to expose him to too many potential nasties that are out in the environment. But Job is still vulnerable, and his recovery is far from complete. Inspectors are attempting to rescue a dog that they suspect has been abandoned for several days. I think we're going to have to, you know, physically tie her up. They are trying to make a harness so the dog can be lowered from the deck. Yeah, we've just got to, got to use what we've got with us, so you've got to think on your feet and get the job done. Inspector Todd Neal will try to catch the dog if anything goes wrong. I'll just lift her over the balustrade and lower her down to Todd rather quickly. It's time to put Herb's DIY harness to the test. Here we go. Good girl, come on. That's good. Here she comes. Got it. Yep. I got it. Oi, good trip. Good trip. Oh, so she probably hasn't been in this backyard for some time by the look of it. I mean, that could have gone a lot worse, but she's very cooperative. She seems to be excited to be down here. I mean, she's been up on that deck for a long time, so she's having a good little roll and a romp around. She looks like she's having a lot of fun. <laughs> Dive roll. Come on. The SBCA is leaving a notice giving the owner seven days to claim her. Job's case is receiving a lot of attention and the public has dug deep to help him. Um, all this stuff is gifts that people have sent him for Job. 
Um, we've been overwhelmed by the generosity of the public. Through donations of more than $10,000, the SPCA is able to pay for Job's ongoing treatment. You know, the publicity has been good to, to let the public know that there are actually animals that are treated this badly. He was near death when I found him, and I think a lot of other dogs might have just given up. But I don't think he wanted to. And he never stops wagging his tail. It's just, that's what gets me, I think, is that he keeps wagging his tail, no matter what. The other good news is that Vicky may have found who was responsible for Job. We've located the, the owner or the person in charge of Job, and we're taking the matter to the courts. On Akawo Island property, Sue is making an extraordinary discovery. Here's um, a wee collection of wallaby skulls. <laughs> Little trophy collection. You try and have time with your family, that's what island life's about and batches are about. And people start doing this sort of thing because they want to make it their place to grow plants. Go to an island where there is no wallabies then. We have to find that poison because, you know, just to see what, how it presents and um, how it's being distributed. This is kind of macabre. A little bit of a hip bone here. Sue is finding plenty of evidence of dead wallabies, but she I needs to find what's killing them. I found a bait station. Oh, really? Where? Just up here. Here we go. And it looks like Rachel may have found the evidence they are after. Yeah. Oh, that's poison. That's poison, all right. OK. And that's set in such a way, obviously not to attract rats, because... Um, they won't reach. <laughs> they won't reach. From an SPCA perspective, what we're trying to find out through this is whether this poison, whatever it is, that has been set in such a way as to poison wallabies, is killing them in a way that is inhumane, i.e. causing them pain and suffering. Sue will take the suspicious bait away to be analysed. In the meantime, she is covering the bait station to ensure no wallabies can get to it. On arrival at base, the SPCA staff discover another sign of the huskies' neglect. Huskies shed their coats twice a year, and during this period they should be groomed daily. If I had a coat that thick, I'd be shedding it that quickly as well, I think. It appears this girl hasn't seen a brush for some time. If an owner turns up, they will have to be educated on how to care for this high-maintenance breed. On a lifestyle property south of Auckland, a happy, healthy dog is running free. Believe it or not, it's Job. And Vicky has come to check his progress. Good boy. He obviously really recognises you. He's a very happy boy, isn't he? <laughs> Looks great, eh? Wouldn't even know it was him, the same one. I mentioned to the SPCA that I wanted to be involved with Joe because it's very humbling that a dog would be so forgiving. He's lots of fun. He's, if he was a human, his personality would just fill a room. And I think that's probably how he was able to survive. He would have held on to every last breath. And I think a dog that didn't have that kind of spirit wouldn't have lasted at all. Job is healing physically, but before he is rehomed, he has some behavioural issues to overcome. He's going to have some dog training. Um, he's got a couple of bad habits. He is about to begin obedience training to teach him some better manners. <coughs> Sue has been called to a mainland vet where a woman has brought in a sick wallaby from Kawo Island. It wasn't actually me that found it. It was a guy called Richie on the island. And uh, it was every time it, he went, went right up to it and touched it. And then it tried to run away from him and it went a few feet and fell over. So we thought it was best that it came in and got sorted and dealt with properly. Because I don't want it to carry on dying slowly. The poison in question removes vitamin K from the blood. Vitamin K is a blood clotting agent. And um, without that, the whole blood system gets leaky. So it just becomes very anemic, loses the ability to carry oxygen to the tissues. So the fire goes out. 
This wallaby is clearly suffering, so Ross puts him out of his misery by euthanizing him. disgusting. They shouldn't be poisoning. It's a cruel, horrible death. Ross is just going to take some samples and find out for sure what this is, um, and then go from there. The results of this animal's post-mortem, together with an analysis of the bait found on the island, will hopefully prove what's killing the wallabies. Within 24 hours of the Husky's arrival, the SPCA has been contacted by her owner, and he wants his dog back. It's just a guy that really had no idea, OK? He, he's obviously got a dog as a pet, not realising the amount of work that's involved in owning a Husky. The owner has agreed to comply with the SPCA's instructions about how to care for his dog, named Money. So just giving them pointers on grooming, how to you know, get rid of the undercoat, trying to find somewhere for it better, rather than being kept on a, on a balcony and just locked away, just so it can defecate everywhere, it's just not good enough. So he's, he's going to go home and you know, reassess his actual whole environmental situation that he's at, just to be able to um, create a better environment for his dog. He's been given a good talking to by Carl and seems somewhat embarrassed. I just don't want to get into a radio. No. The SPCA will return to the property soon to check money's living conditions have improved. For the past two weeks, an animal trainer has been working to resolve Job's behavioural problems. He had a hard start, so everybody treated him wonderfully well. So he says, I'm important. And if I'm important, you can't be. You have to get the dog adjusted into sort of thinking, well, actually, I'm only the dog again, you know? Jan's sister, Lindley, is helping with the foster care of Job. Job's become a lot calmer since the training, actually. He knows when it's training time, he calms right down. So it's, um, it's quite a marked difference. It's a good boy. It's good. There has been a huge improvement in Job's behaviour. Normally, by now, he would be barking at them. That's really what we're looking for, that he can be around other animals, not doing stuff, just being Job, as opposed to Job in charge. But here comes the acid test, as Lindley takes the lead. Let's give a closer look at Harry. I don't think he's ever been this close to a goat before and not been barking. His idea last week was that he should eat Harry through the fence. Job has once again proved what a remarkable dog he is and can finally be put up for adoption. Good boy. Sue now has the results of the post-mortem of the wallaby and the analysis of the bait taken from the island. OK, well, um, we have confirmed that it is Bredificum um, that has been used to poison the wallabies. Um, Bredificum works by increasing the clotting time of the blood, which um, leads to death from hemorrhaging. Bradificum isn't licensed to be used on wallabies, and we know that it, it's definitely an inhumane, painful way to die for any animal. Sue is sending a notice to island residents, warning them to stop using the poison on wallabies immediately, or they could face prosecution. <coughs> Herb has returned to check on money, the neglected husky in need of some exercise. <coughs> Hello, you. Hello, Bill. The deck's been cleared up, but money still appears to be confined to it. Well, there's a couple of dog poos and stuff, but that's quite acceptable. You've got to make sure that you take her for walks every day, though, because a dog like money is just so much energy. And to be on the deck like this all day, it just drives them nuts. She's going to go insane, you know? She's bored. There is nothing for her to do up here. She's got pot plants for company, and that's it. If he wants just something to give a name to. You know, I told him he might as well get a rock because it doesn't do anything and he's not doing anything with the dog. You know, if you haven't got time to spend with your animal, don't get one. The SPCA will continue to check up on the Husky to ensure that its care improves. Several weeks after sending her warning letter, Sue is returning to Kawo Island to check that the poisoning has stopped. It's got nothing in it. And this is exactly what 
um, they've been instructed to do until the bait stations were repositioned was to remove any poison. It appears most residents have complied with the SBCA's instructions to remove poison from bait stations targeting wallabies. Come on, dinner time! Sue is also revisiting Adrian, whose feed today attracts only one wallaby. We're getting far fewer now than we did six, even 12 months ago. But I think they're being culled to a dangerously low level, really. And what we have to hope for now is that all the culling will stop and the numbers will regenerate and um, they can once again become a symbol of Kauau Island. Sue has stopped the inhumane poisoning, but the anti-wallaby brigade has found other ways of eradicating them. Well, I've done pretty much everything I can do now. Um, we've stopped the wallaby has been poisoned. Um, we've made it known it's illegal to use the poison. Um, numbers are dwindling, um, but it would appear that they are being shot and there's nothing the SPCA can do about that if they're killed humanely. The issue we had was with the way they were being controlled. So our work is done here for now. Foster parent Lindley couldn't part with Job, so she has given him a permanent home. And today they have come to see his rescuer, Vicky. We got Job and Lizzie at the same time, and they were both foster dogs then. And uh, Lizzie would come to adopt as well, the same as Job. And uh, Lizzie, when we first got her, was very, very shy and uh, very scared of everything. But um, once she met Job, <laughs> I think he brought her out of her shell a little bit. And it looks like Job is still performing wonders. What a great team, eh? The prosecution um, hasn't been resolved as yet. The defendant has um, left the country. So there's a border alert um, in place. So when he comes back, he'll be arrested on entry. Job will always be special to me. Um, basically, he's, he's put a, made a huge impact on my life, just that that little lifeless dog that was just about dead, and just his fight to survive, he made it happen. 